Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Reviews and Previews. We're back after another week in the Premier League. And what a week it's been. It's been an interesting week for me. Um, you might have seen if you're um, not subscribed, if you follow my TikTok. Um, that I managed to get Joe Willick's shirt at the um, Newcastle game. I will um, be showing that off maybe in another video soon. You never know. Um, so yeah, that was a bit of a dream come true, you know. That was pretty cool. Um, couldn't believe it really. Um... Anyway, it was a good week. Um, I I I got starstruck. Really, couldn't believe I got his shirt. A bit mad. Um, you saw me before the game with my poster that I'd made. Uh, so it was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, blessed. You know, I was buzzing. Pretty cool. Um, anyway, let's get into what happened last week and um, fix us this week as well. Got some big bang, bit uh, big games coming up. Um, so last weekend, very good week again for Newcastle as they won again against um. Leicester, not many fixtures, there's only six um, on the weekend, there's only six in the week as well, so um, Southampton beat Arsenal, that was a horror show, or a little CR7 hat-trick, helped Man United win, and Tottenham got beat by Brighton, which was which was amazing to start off the, the Saturday, and I thought, right, Arsenal, if you win, you're in the driver's seat again, but no, they lose one now, I'm, I'm thinking, oh dear, why am I supporting this club, and then Newcastle, another good result for them, and obviously both teams won midweek as well. We'll get into that in a minute. We'll quickly go over the bad one of Arsenal. So yeah, Bednarek. I thought I thought Arsenal after after seeing maybe Spurs' result, losing one 0 they'd have thought, right, let's go out this game, let's have them. To be fair, we went at them. We we should have scored four or five, but Ferries are forced to have an absolute worldly of a game. It was a one nil poor defending for the, the Southampton goal. But they put they they didn't play exactly well, Arsenal, but they did what they could, I suppose. Um, look at the possession stats, the shots. They did mo They did what they could. They just didn't have that finishing touch. Lacazette didn't play because he had COVID, I think, maybe. Um, so, yeah, and Ketia started up front. And, yeah, it wasn't good. Tavares, so I'm not sure how he got another start, and Cedric started again. But, yeah, but then it, we'll go. We'll stick with Arsenal. It was, it was a bad result on Saturday. They knew against Chelsea midweek they had to show something. And certainly they did. A 4-2 win over Chelsea, who got into the FA Cup so FA Cup final this week after beating Palace. Liverpool also beat Man City in their semi to get into the final. So it's a Carabao Cup rematch in that one. So they sort of didn't play exactly their best team, Chelsea. I can't lie. Um, it wasn't their best team, but still, Arsenal played well. I mean, their back three is definitely makeshift, if you look at that. Um, Chelsea's defending for this game is pretty poor. But in Ketia, after absolutely bombing against... Um, Southampton, he came up and delivered in this game. He got two goals, Saka as well, Saka and then Emil Smith-Rowe um, got the penalty and Smith-Rowe also got another goal against Chelsea. And then, uh, yeah, Werner and Chelsea never had, so they pulled back it They pulled it back twice for them. Um, I couldn't actually keep up to this date of this game because at this time I was obviously at the Newcastle game against Palace. I had no signal in the game, in the um, Newcastle stadium, so I couldn't... Um, keep up to date so I only saw the scores on the scoreboard so it was I saw it's two all at half time I thought oh that's mad pretty cool and I saw they won at the end so that was pretty good for Arsenal good win for them um they played well to be fair for once um they didn't they didn't play amazing I thought I saw the highlights and they didn't play amazing but I think they got a bit lucky with um Chelsea's with Chelsea's defending and their defence and all um I'm not sure what happened for the fourth goal with Aspilicueta just holding on to Saka I was a bit Interesting, but yeah, good 4 2 win. We've gone level with Tottenham now, so that's good for us. Um, level Tottenham three points clear of Man United, game in hand over them. But obviously, the big game against Man United this week is going to determine a lot. So, yeah, big game is still coming up for Arsenal. They have to win this one. Look at the attendance at Chelsea, there's hardly anybody there. There's only 30k, normally about 40. But good uh, an overall, a mediocre week for Arsenal, I would say, but a good end to it. Bad start, good end. Anyway, on to Newcastle and just another terrific week for them, to be honest. Um, I'll get back to it. <clears throat> a big win against Leicester on Sunday with Bruno Gamarge at the double. 95th minute winner. That was absolute limbs, I'd imagine, at Newcastle. Took his shirt off. That was, that was absolutely brilliant. I watched that match. I was... Thinking, oh, it's just fading out. This was not good. Um, and then Willock burst down the left to um get to the crossing and an absolute thumping diving header from Gamarish and it was brilliant. Um, but yeah, good win on the Sunday and then back again. Oh, I've done it again. Oh, back again on the um 
on the Wednesday when I was there. Big 1-0 win. Miguel Almiron. What a goal from him. Um, I saw it. He cut in. He came sort of cut inside on the on the break and he went straight in top corner. To be honest, I didn't think it was going to go in because he's, his, his um, goal scoring record is not good. I think it was his first goal since 2021, yeah. Um, yeah, it was our sixth home win in a row. Managed to get Joe Willick's shirt out of the game. Um, so, yeah, he came over after they did the little lap of honour at the end and he came over, saw me with my sign. I, he saw me before the game, actually. He gave me a little thumbs up to um, say... I'll, I'll basically say I'll give you a, give you my shirt off the game, and he did. He didn't really say much to me, and I, yeah, got his shirt. It was pretty cool. Um, yeah, I'll probably get it framed. To be honest, we'll have to we'll have to go see that one. It was it was weird because um I obviously got a Willock shirt already. You can there's a lot of differences in the um shirts themselves. But anyway, to the game, and it was a good performance by Newcastle again as they kept out Crystal Palace. Because Wilfred Zaha was getting absolutely booed every time he got on the ball. I think he pushed ML Craft early on and the crowd thought, right, no, you're not having that. You're getting booed now for the rest of the game. When he, whenever he missed a goal, or whenever he missed a goal and when he had a shot, everyone was just going, it was, it, was, it was amazing. But yeah, the atmosphere overall at Newcastle was absolutely t- tremendous. It was probably the best atmosphere I've ever been to at a football game. My, it, I'm, I was almost going deaf at the, at the, at the noise. It was... It was amazing. Um, but yeah, Newcastle definitely safe now to 40 points. What a game it was. Oh, it doesn't look like a good game, but I can tell you now it was it was a pretty it was a pretty interesting one. Um yeah, anyway, let's get on to the scores and fixtures for this week. And we've got some big games coming up this week. We will do we will do the Man United Chelsea game as well. Um so anyway, let's get straight into it. Arsenal. I'm gonna go Arsenal one, Man United one. That's what my head says. My heart says two one to Arsenal. But I know realistically CR seven is coming back and he's gonna get the old shirt off and commemorate his um poor old son who unfortunately died in, at birth. That was pretty sad for him. He missed the Liverpool game obviously, so that was um horrendous for him, for Ronaldo, but um I know he's gonna if he scores he will definitely do that. And he's also one goal off his hundred club. So he's definitely gonna do that. We'll get into more detail in that in a minute. Um this is gonna be quite a long video, I apologise, I apologise. Um so yeah, Arsenal won, Man United won, Leicester won, Aston Villa won, Man City four, Watford won, Norwich nil, Newcastle two. Should be a win for the Magpies, I hope there. Um Brentford ooh, Brentford Two Brent top <coughs> what am I on about Brentford two Tottenham two I'm gonna have a high scoring draw there I reckon Brentford could have them though um Brighton Brighton one Southampton one Burnley ooh Burnley one Wolves two I'll go put Burnley up on the oh, who cares um I'll go Chelsea one West Ham one no I go I think Chelsea might actually win that one Chelsea two West Ham one and Liverpool three Everton 1, Crystal Palace 1, Leeds 1, and Man United 1, Chelsea 2. I think Chelsea get back on track this week, to be honest. Um, I think Thomas Trick will put a rocket up their bum, shall I say. Um, anyway, let's get into the Arsenal-Man United game. It's a massive game. Um, brilliant night on Wednesday, but they've got to keep the form going. They played well. They defended as a team. I don't think he'll change anything, to be honest, Mikel. I think he'll keep the same team. But Man United do have a few players coming back. Um, Tommy Asher could come back into the team. That could be good. I don't think I'd risk him though. To be honest, I don't think I would. I think I'd save. I think I would not. I would not take the chance that he could be fit because he might just not be. I'm saying one all now. I think Arsenal could win this, but I also think Man United could win this. It's gonna be a tight game. It depends what Man United turn up. If the Man United at Liverpool turn up, then I think we we have them. But. If the Man United with a bit of fight after they've got their new manager, Eric Ten Hag, I think they could have a bit of hope. And I remember last time we played them this season, it was a 3 2 Ronaldo penalty to win the game. And it had just been announced that Ralph Ragnick was um, going to be their next interim manager. So there was a bit of hope and fight. So, yeah, after, I think after the game, Michael Carrick, who was interim at that time, also left. So it was a bit of a. It was a bit of a weird one, but yeah, look at that. Ronaldo, Varane, big names, McTominay as well. Pretty crucial, actually, considering they don't have a Brie. They have a, uh, they have no defensive midfielders left. I mean, Matic isn't going to do much for them, but yeah, it's going to be a tight game. Um, I, I would start the same team, though, because I think you've got to go with the happy heads, you know. Um, Lacazette, I think I'd use, he's, he's good to, like, 
he's, I think he's a bit more of a super sub now, to be honest. I think I'd bring him on maybe, but maybe not. I think... I'm not sure, because Smithrow is... Smithrow is technically good. I reckon, I reckon, but yeah, just start the same team. See what happens. Um... Yeah, let, let's let's hope Arsenal play well and they get a result. Arsenal, realistically, Arsenal need to win this to keep in the hunt. They need to set the standards. They get a point or more, but they they want the win. If Arsenal get a point or more, obviously they go above Tottenham before the Brentford game. But so as I've said before, it's probably all going to come down in the end to that North London derby at Tottenham. So yeah, but I don't think Arsenal can let it come down to that. I think they need to almost have top four in the bag by then and hope the Spurs slip up a bit and win their next couple of games. So yeah. Big ne- the next four games are absolutely crucial. Well, the next well next six obviously are, but next four in particular are because Arsenal have some tricky fixtures. They need to get round them somehow. Anyway, let's get on to a uh, Newcastle game. Newcastle and Norwich. Yeah, I wouldn't change much, but maybe a bit because they have played the same team twice in a row now. So yeah, he he's looking to freshen things up. Old Eddie said, they love the fans love Eddie. I can tell you now, they're absolutely loving him. The the atmosphere. The Newcastle, it, it, Newcastle on the up. They're looking into that. They're looking for that top ten finish now. You know, they're only a only a point behind Leicester, who admittedly do have two games in hand. But you know, they they could go above Brighton. You never know. Um, I think they should just you know play as they have to for the rest of the season because they just need to. They're safe now, so you just see what how high they can go in the table. I mean, I don't think. I don't think Norwich. I don't think it's going to be an easy game. You know, Norwich are playing well recently. They beat Burnley last time. Uh, well, before they got beat by Man United, but they showed a bit of fight there at least. Um, but so I think it's going to be a close game. I'm going two 0 Newcastle, but that's just because I'm biased probably. But I think Norwich. You never know. They they beat us last time at Carrow Road when Pookie got a hat trick. Um, that was a bit unfortunate, but um, yeah, I'd probably. I'd probably, yeah, as Eddie Howe said, they're freshening a few things up. Maybe get Willock in the starting lineup, you know, for once. Um, yeah, I'm hoping for a good thing from him. Um, yes, I can't believe I still got his shirt. Anyway, let's get into the top scorers. And Salah's still out on top after a double against United, shoring up his place at the top. Ronaldo's got into third somehow after getting his hat trick. Um, it's apparently he's been having a bad season while he's third in that. That's mostly thankful to two hat tricks though. Um. Yeah, he has sparks of Cristiano, doesn't he? Um, obviously the Liverpool players on top for the assist still. Um, Mason Mount getting close though. Uh, Pogba won't add to that after he's out for the rest of the season now. Um, anyway, onto the table then, and Man City v Liverpool. Well, for the title race, there's no more games between them, but you know it's going to be a close one. If City win all their games, they're champions. So you know that's that's what they got to do. So Liverpool are hoping they slip up somewhere. Um, relegation battle, Watford Norwich, they're gone. Burnley and Everton, that is the big one. Whoever whoever gets out of that, I'm not sure, but Burnley seem like they got a bit of fight, even after sacking Sean Dyche, the new manager bounce sometimes does work, you know. Leeds aren't quite safe yet. Um, Aston Villa could even get pulled into it yet, you never know, just say. Uh, probably not, though. Leeds aren't safe, though, I don't think. Only five points clear. They want to get a win against Palace Monday night to shore things up, but I think they probably will be fine. So I think it's between Everton and Burnley and obviously Newcastle trying to get as high as possible now. And Arsenal still in the fight for the top four. I'd say West Ham and Wolves are probably out of it now. I think West Ham are just going to focus on their semi-finals in the uh, Europa League now. So Man United pretty much have to beat Arsenal to stay in the race. But if Arsenal get a win against Man United, I think they get them, push them out of the race for the top four. So it, it could just be Tottenham against Arsenal, the big North London derby. Derby could decide it all, and yeah, Chelsea not even not even really there yet, but you know Arsenal could catch them yet. Anyway, that was gonna do it for this video, guys. It's been a long one. I have had to do a bit of a story time about the how I got Joe Willock's shirt. That will probably be the title as well. So anyway, yeah, I hope you enjoy, guys, and yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye, bye, bye.